Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. This is my rewatch of The Lord of the Rings. And for those of you who tuned in to get a glimpse of Bacon, he is sleeping on the floor. I'm just gonna quickly record a little shot of him uh, for everyone that wants to see uh, my cute dog. So he's down there. Um, he's as bored with these movies as I am by now. Um, but anyway, um, thanks for tuning in. Let's get started. <laughs> Okay, um, let's just go ahead and get right to it. Picking up from where we left off last time, we are at minute um, 3342, and I'm going to go ahead and start pressing play um, now. Um, yeah, we're still, um, still watching this flashback of the montage we saw just a little while ago. Um, I realized when I was editing the last batch that just by luck, um, I've been always putting my laptop here as I'm watching along with you guys. And um, so it looks like, and I'm also in frame putting the screen right here, and so it looks like I'm um, looking down at the same thing you guys are looking at just by, <laughs> by luck. Um, this is still going on. <laughs> okay, now... Um, we're back in the Shire, or maybe, yeah, I guess it's not the Shire. Yeah, he's looking for the Shire. Yeah, that's a scene. I'm gonna have to check. Was that in the uh, in the release? Um, now we get some more Shire. Now we're gonna get a, a real introduction to the um, other hobbits besides Frodo. Um, creating some steaks for good old Samwise. You're beginning to sound like that old Bilbo Baggins. Young Mr. Frodo here. He's cracking. I'm as proud as a... Cheers, Gaffer. Well, it's none of our concern what goes on beyond our borders. Keep your nose out of trouble and no trouble will come to you. Oh, foreshadowing, that's what that's called. And we just saw that scene with the writer, so does that mean a writer is here? And you're getting some <laughs> seeing Jackson's horror roots. Yeah. Flashback to again <laughs> what happened just a few minutes ago. Again, like, I keep harping on it, but we had that whole opening montage to explain what the ring is. There's nothing. And yet here we are, <laughs> you know, giving more background on what the ring is. I know it's called Lord of the Rings, but it's some form of eldritch. it seems a little excessive. Mordor. 
common kind that says one ring rules them all. One ring is right. One ring is the law. The most famous line in all of the trilogy. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pause there. Um, yeah, so um, I let it play a little longer than usual, but it, I just wanted to get through that whole sequence. And just I just find it so baffling that we have these three um, epic novels that we're trying to compress into three movies, and we're being forced to eliminate you know great scenes and great characters to make it all fit. Obviously, tough choices are going to have to be made, but Peter Jackson chooses to give us this, um, what I think is probably unnecessary altogether, piece of information three different times in the first 40 minutes. We have the long opening montage. We have um, Gandalf go and do research and have this kind of you know pseudo montage of him in a... Um, library researching the ring and then here he comes and he explains what he just researched and it's just like why are we why are we doing this you know once let alone three times I know I keep complaining about it but it's just so frustrating that he is being so wasteful with the time that he has because he needs to be really precious with his time and it just this is further proof that while Peter Jackson is is very good with visuals and creating a world and using the scenery of New Zealand to great effect and and all of that the casting all the things that you know people love about the movies but just the simple act of of writing the script is is so beyond him because here we just have something repeated three times for no good reason and it it just bugs me so much um, I know maybe it's a small detail to some, but for me, it's just really a signal that he is not up to the task of, of doing this job. I, I really believe, and we're going to see this as we're moving forward through this entire next, you know, several scenes and sequences until we get to Elrond, I really believe that he is not able to really craft suspense in a way that is appropriate. He's relying too much, even in this scene with Gandalf's reintroduction to the Shire, he's relying on like cheap horror tricks. You know, it's like Frodo comes back home after being out with his friends and um, it's kind of dark and shadowy and he opens the door and the window is open for some reason and the ominous music is playing and he, he walks into the dark home and someone reaches out to grab him after we just saw that earlier cutaway to that eerie, scary writer asking about, you know, Baggins and, and the Shire and... And so we're like led to believe that that's, is it, is it one of those writers? And it's just, it's so cheap. It, it just bothers me so much that he's relying on those tricks um, when there is so much real suspense that he could be creating. And once again, I pointed out before, just let us not understand what the ring is and just see signs that there might be something off, like the way that Bilbo resisted giving it up and the way that Gandalf is so gingerly avoiding touching it, and it, it just obviously could have been better. And, you know, finally, I mentioned this before, but I think we really see as we move through those two scenes with Gandalf being there the first time and then being there the second time that um, it was go always going to be a difficult um, decision that he was going to have to make about how to handle the opening and, and how to introduce the ring, how to cover everything that was in The Hobbit um, that we're not going to get to see, and to somehow stay true to what happened in the, in the books where Gandalf wasn't sure about the ring. He left. Many years passed. He came back. Um, well, in the way they did it, it doesn't feel like any time has passed, right? Um, it feels like 
you know, five minutes has passed because that in movie time, that is what happened. And so I still believe he would have been much better served compressing those two scenes into one. I know it's different from the book, but it would have been an understandable change. And it would have forced him to go about introducing the ring in a much more efficient and hopefully more suspenseful way. Anyway, end of rant. Um, once again, <laughs> we're still clinging to um, the opening montage. I can't promise this will be the last time I mention the opening montage, but um, maybe it will be. Anyway, that's it for, for this episode. Um, I, <laughs> I have a feeling a lot of you are going to want to commiserate with this opening sequence in the comments. Please feel free. Um, I'll, you know, I'm happy to have that discussion <laughs> some more. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you guys next time.